up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So in today's video we're going to talk about some fun things we can do with the extensions extrude tools, helix along curve, and we may mess around with joint push pull as well. Based on what we're doing in here you can use these tools in order to create more organic structures and other kinds of interesting shapes. But let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright so you're going to want to have several different extensions installed on your computer. I will link to all of these in the notes down below. They are all free extensions. Um, so every extension I talk about will be linked in the notes down below. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to talk a little bit about using the extension extrusion tools in order to create some kind of interesting shapes inside of SketchUp. And so extrusion tools is basically um, a set of tools from TIG that allows you to extrude edges into some really interesting shapes and it's got a lot of great tool sets in here. Um, in particular we're going to focus today on extrude edges by rails. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a simple helix and I'm going to do that using the extension helix along curve. And so in order to do that you need a curve, right? So you actually need like a line in here that's going to make up the curve. So in this situation I'm going to draw a line and we're going to go ahead and we're going to say that the line is 50 feet tall. So this is going to be a 50 foot tall line. Then we can select this and with helix along curve we can create a helix that rotates around this. And so basically what I want to do is I want to set this so that my uh, so that my first radius is something like 12 inches or one foot. Actually we want to set it so that our first radius is like 40 feet. Our second radius is going to be something like one foot. And what we want to do is we want to set this up so that it does one lap around our curve, or in this case our single edge. And we can also set our number of sections per lap. The more sections we set, the more detail we're going to get in here to work with. So um, because this is basically going to use the curve in order to generate a shape. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set this so that it has like 48 sections or something like that. And we want to create tube set to no. We're going to go ahead and click on OK. So what that's done is that's created a curve right here that we can use along with extrude tools. And so what we want to do is we want to draw an edge between this point and this point and we're going to set this to extrude this so that it follows along this curve. So I'm just going to draw a line from here to here. And so what we have is we basically have an edge and we have the two paths that we want this to extrude along, which we'll talk more about in just a second. But you're going to run into a problem because what we want to do is we want to do extrude edges by rails. So we want to select a profile and you can see how I'm getting an error message. The reason why this is an error message is because this is a single edge and this extension requires curves. So what we want to do is we want to basically take this edge and use kind of a workaround in order to make it into a curve. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to right click on this and we're going to divide it. And I'm going to divide it, we'll go ahead and divide it into 10 segments right here, right? This still won't work though because if I select these, these are just in here as individual edges. And so what you need to do is you need to download the extension Weld. And what Weld is going to do is it's going to take a number of edges and it will basically... So what Weld will do is it'll take a number of edges and it'll make them into an individual curve. Or it'll take all of the edges and weld them together into a curve. So even if they're straight, because these are going to be segments welded together, SketchUp is going to consider this a curve. So we're just going to go to Extensions, Weld. So now if I click on this, notice how this says curve. So because this says curve, basically what this means is this means that this, even though it's made up of 10 segments, is a straight curve, but it's still a curve. So we want to do the same thing with this edge right here. However, what we want to do with this one is we want to make it so it has the same number of segments as our curve that we created with helix along curve. And I'm going to go ahead and right click on this and I'm going to explode it so it's just in here as a curve. But notice how this curve has 48 segments. Well we want our geometry to align with this so what we want to do is we want to right click and divide this into 48 segments as well. So I'm just going to type in 48 and hit the enter key. And so notice how what this did is this divided this up into 48 edges and we're just going to take this 
we're gonna use the weld extension to weld this together. So now this is also a curve made up of 48 segments. So now we have our helix right here, we have our edge right here, then we have this curve right here. So now we have all the parts that we need for extrusion tools in order to create our extrusion. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on extrude edges by rails. It's gonna ask us for our profile curve. So we're gonna click on this first curve. Now it's gonna ask for the first rail, which is gonna be right here. It's gonna ask for the second rail, which is gonna be right here. And then it's gonna ask for the melding profile curve. That's if this was to turn into another curve on the other side. In this case, we're just gonna click on our individual edge. So when I click on this, what this is gonna do is this is gonna fill this in with a face. And it's gonna ask if we want a reverse direction. We're gonna say no. Reverse faces, no. Quad faces, I usually say yes. So that'll just make these all quads. It's gonna ask if we wanna erase the original curves. I pretty much never say yes to this one, just in case I need to go back and retry this. But notice how what we've done is we've created a curve in here or a, a kind of a spiraling shape in here. And so from here, there's a lot of different things that we can do. So. For example, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make a copy of this off to the side. So I'm gonna use the move tool in copy mode in order to do that. For example, we could make this a component and then make a copy of that component, but in a circle. So we're gonna use the rotate tool in copy mode. We'll make a copy, we'll call it 180 degrees like this. So notice how you can use this in order to create this fun spiraling shape. One of the cool things about this is if you make a change to one of these, the others are going to change as well. But notice how, like for example, I can't push pull this because it's made up of a smoothed face or a softened face. So if I was to turn hidden geometry on, what you're gonna notice is you're gonna notice that this is actually two different faces and these edges have just been hidden so that you can't see them. And so what we could do is we could select a number of these and we could use the extension joint push pull in order to push pull them because joint push pull can push pull multiple faces at once. So if we were to do that, we could use the joint push pull tool. We could extrude this up just like this in order to create kind of a ridge. And notice how because our other side over here was also a component, that change is reflected over here. And so one of the cool things about this is this was all created as quad geometry. Well, one of the things about quad geometry is it's very predictable. Well, there's a great extension from TomTom, also free, called Quad Face Tools. And so if you use that, what this allows you to do is this allows you to quickly manipulate things like selections. So let's say, for example, that I wanted to take all of these and I wanted to use joint push pull in order to give them a ridge. Well, what I could do is I could select some edges like this. Well, Quad Face Tools has a tool built in that allows you to select loops. So what that means is that means that this is gonna come in here and this is going to select everything that makes up a loop inside of this geometry. So what that allowed us to do is that allowed us to select all of the geometry all the way around here. Well then, I could use the free extension joint push pull in order to add a ridge to each one of these. So I'm gonna give this a little bit of thickness right here. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna click. And one thing I might wanna do is you might want to generate your new geometry as a group. That way you can apply material just to that geometry. But now if I was to click on the checkbox right here, you can see how what that would allow me to do is that would allow me to actually add in detail along this curving face. So and then you could come in here and you could do a shift click to select all these groups and you could apply like a color to it if you wanted to. So maybe something like this light blue. And then I take the whole thing select it and you could soften your coplanar edges. So then if we look at this from like a top view, you get this cool kind of spiraling shape. You could play around with this more if you wanted to. Like for example, you could set your style or your backside face or your back color was the same as your front color so that you don't have the back face and the front face. So again, I'm not necessarily sure how practical 
this shape is, but you can use the principles from this video in order to start creating other interesting things using extrude tools and some of these other extensions. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? Is it something that you think you could use for some other things? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.